sight of bullet holes stirs something in you, making you forget the lieutenant's surname. The faded marks are too degraded to draw any forensic conclusions, just chips in the sandstone. They look pretty ancient. Where? There? Those are old. Yes, the one that happened half a century ago. Those bullets were fired during the revolution and do not warrant an investigation by officers of civil law. Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Shall we go? This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. Probably some kit. A simple but clever solution to ruin in a coin-operated viewer. It took ingenuity. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word Onuk written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis, or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, a great moral height to be strived towards. The church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach and a small tent set up on the ice. This coin-operated viewer is facing south. The instruction manual says to insert 25 centims and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom in if necessary. Why place a tourist attraction in the middle of such poverty? There was a revitalization project in 49. A design studio tried restoring Martinez to its pre-war glory. It didn't stick. They got as far as the street lamps and that statue on the intersection before something went sour. I suspect it was Evar's class doing. He muscled them out. It's how it usually goes around here. We should have done something about the Union ten years ago. That ship has sailed, officer. Your money disappears into the coin slot. A clunk. The ring of metal. The curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry. Different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab grey shape. Like a ghost. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an islet in the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible. A half-sunken sea fort. Its concrete almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. Its leaves ripped from it by the winter wind. The little brave birch tree seems to wave back in the wind. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it out. Whoa, what have we here? A bridge with loose nails and rot-infested wood that creaks in the wind. A construction code violation if there ever was one. True. They never cleaned up the wall damage. The rest of Revacho looks better, though. The bridge is fine enough. Locals use it all the time, after all. It's nothing to worry about. Shall we? This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Blank, conveying nothing. Because this is no ordinary wall, it is sublime. Look at it, the shadows, the colors. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this, the uncontested pinnacle of wallcraft.
color peeled from the very face of God. Oh, Wallfather. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. Mm hmm. Sure. I suppose we have to pass by it again at some point, anyway. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep? Apparently. She doesn't like people standing behind her back. Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. If anything, you're afraid she'll take you out one day. Don't get fucking clever with me, pig. You think you're so clever. The spread pattern of these bullet holes makes your chest ache. Your breath grows heavier. More old bullet holes. Half a century at least. From the revolution. You peer into the faded marks in the stone. They peer back like an endless row of tiny black holes. Sweat starts trickling down your brow. Your chest feels tight looking at them. It's closing in. Caving in. Ever tighter. Your breathing grows even heavier. You okay there? Might be the after effects of your past escapades. What are you looking at? Bullet holes generally look the same, so probably. But you're right. More old bullet holes from the revolution. Plenty. What's that noise you down? see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a Not looking for any trouble, officer. It's the voice of someone who has something to hide, my liege. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. It's the god of cigarettes and youth. Ask him if he's got anything to spare. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. That's definitely not his real name. No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? Ask him again. And I really need to finish this cigarette. But he hasn't left yet. I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinet's standards. What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait. Is someone else investigating the lynching? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. He's an actor, declaiming a soliloquy. See how you hang on his every word? You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? I had a friend over. It was my Sunday friend. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby and drinking beer. He doesn't reply. Gesturing, no, with his cigarette. Under the dull and darkening sky, the neighboring windows stand silent. Someone hides behind a curtain. Those windows have eyes, and those eyes are watching, spying on you three. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. 
This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes, compassion, and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on, what's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This will just have to go in and see. A shift in temperature, the air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. A former architect stands before a slice of window, a room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen, with temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. She had an eye for beauty. What happened here? It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Indeed.
Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. This woman's health is failing her. There's not much to do. Not in this damp. I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. And all she gets, too. The coastal wind beats down hard on the coal room door, outside. Splashes of waves make the balcony slippery. She hasn't spoken to anyone for a while. Even her sentences feel rusty. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? <laughs> what was so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Ask away, policeman. The hell am I supposed to know? Another nut job, I assume. She really doesn't like those nut jobs. Some lunatic lost his mind. All kinds of morons pass through these halls. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. They probably just moved or died. Hopefully somewhere else. She mumbles some kind of a response, then hacks something into her handkerchief. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. Sounded like a woman. A woman's shoes. A poor communard, from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk-drawn number on the board says, number 11. No reply. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. The shackle snaps like a twig, and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads, Kras Marzov. The White Star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. I suspect that's exactly what they are trying to do. There aren't many communists around. 
Not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. The lieutenant raises a brow. Thank you for sharing this wonderful opinion on human sexuality. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism. In other words, I'll keep my armistice handy, detective. He doesn't actually reach for his gun. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment and fear in equal measure to symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world, and at the same time, above it. Because white is the color of peace. Communism is the ideology of gutless intellectuals and clueless university students they don't care about the real working man. In other words, it doesn't mean a thing to true Revacholians. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9pm? Sound good? Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow. He's probably gone for today. Give me a moment. Ask away, policeman. No one lives there. It's been empty for months. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. 
Be good and take a look, will you? Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. The symbol of what now? Never heard of it. <laughs> she mumbles some kind. You hear someone walking around inside. Rear Excuse me? Of course not. Scare them. Suspected of some big crime. There's no sweet talking your way in there. Be official. You have plenty of reason to enter. was easy. That was smart. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in, as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Boy, there are a lot of different keys there. More than 20, at least. Her voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Revachol Zone of Control, written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Be friendly. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. A sudden serious look crosses her face. This story didn't have a happy ending. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a- Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but- and again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. So preppy. She's probably on some low-grade performance enhancers, like Preptide or Pericanine. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. The sum must have been puny. Oh, it irks her. The incompetence. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. The radio computer wizards are invested with magical economic powers. It's as if they're real wizards, able to resurrect dead real estate and breathe life into bank accounts. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. 
Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. Of course. Mmm, the luxury of fine things. Just look at those black monk straps. After spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tired feet? Beautiful things give you a rush. It's power. Craft in your style, draping your flesh in silk and leather, deciding how to present yourself to the world. Remember, when they come to take it away from you, you worked for those shoes. Whether you like it or not, wearing these shoes has made you more liberal. Ultra-liberal. They're either a gateway drug or a booster pack to get you deeper into free market ideology. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Hep C. Go where? Accosting a minor? Listen to your partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. She's grown frustrated with her work and welcomes the opportunity to challenge authority in other ways. A brush? An artist? The red splatter is urban expressionism. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Red dyed heavy fuel oil is only used in government vehicles, or at least that's the idea. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her steering. That Ozon whore. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershaw. Its moneyed residents, used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques, rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here though. Just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so. She wants it to be something true and total. This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know, summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. Yeah? Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She means the opposite. You've lessened her desire to deface the building. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. 
Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. What did he think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. She really did it. She's proud of it too. You ain't seen nothing yet, piggy boo. What for? Well, if it's for art, but what kind of art are we talking about? Sounds like you're just about to live out your self-pity, not make a statement. I can't have shit art on my conscience. Yeah, not gonna hold my breath, Piggy. You look like you'd suck. Uh, everything, really. You don't have the skills to execute something like this in practice. But, oh boy, the idea's going to blow her fucking mind. She squints her eyes. On fire. I say, sod off. You don't have the technical skills to do that. Didn't we all? I like your idea. Should have thought of it myself. I don't need this kind of competition in my neighborhood. Then get your brush from fucking art. Oops, my apologies. I guess I was trying too hard. You're a police officer and a grown up. Why are you trying to impress her? Maybe try a different approach. Ooh, police brutality. That's the good stuff. How come you're letting this baby rat run circles around you? End this now. Have you got any kids? Because you sound like the world's saddest dad right now. But fine, take the brush. I'm all out of fuel oil anyway. You know what you should be able to find in your government issued vehicle? Red dyed heavy fuel oil. Are you kidding me? Fuel oil is so much cooler. No way you're disfiguring that beautiful wall with something as pedestrian as ordinary paint. My fuel oil is for my kinema. Use your own fuel if you are unable to contain your artistic impulses, but please, leave my kinema out of it. Watch your back, Ungular. You've got eyes on you. Hello again, officers. Have you- Ooh. Not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. Yes. I keep hoping a shaft will collapse on me. But somehow, it never happens. Does anyone in a city like this? 
If there's pain about any particular home she's lost, she's buried it deep, fortified herself against it. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. The inspiration will come to her once hell is set loose on the streets. It's too calm right now. Shoot, piggy. It's what... Ruination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline, fired from the water, a straight shot into Revachol. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. The wind blows through your hair. The sea breeze cuts around you, high on the balcony, as you stare over the edge of the sea. The waves of the Martinez Inlet roll over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters obscure the better part of the remains. This is where the damage came from. From somewhere in the inlet, the cannons. What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap was thrown into the ocean. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to twelve once did. Restoration has failed. What the shilling took out was never rebuilt. Underwater, iron helmets have sunk deep into the sand and the mud. Helmets of soldiers and their finger bones too, and clavicles littering the ocean floor. A fleet, the combined armies of Occident and Grad, with Mesk volunteers, a five-nation army, hundreds of vessels. They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Coalition warship Archer can shoot 50 shells a minute on 20 coal-lined arches. They will reach the city in 58 seconds. The Coalition, but that was a long time ago. I think we should move on. It's chilly up here. He does not like talking politics of this kind. He fears the discussion might lead to disagreements, as it often does. From the eyes of a seagull, a nest of brown hair not worth the 50-foot dive. From a pedestrian on the dock, a rugged man staring out to sea, mere feet from fatality. From a guest on the balcony of the whirling in rags, a silhouette imposing enough to be seen at a distance. The chill is bracing. The salt hangs in the air. The wind from the ocean pushes at you, smoothing your moustache.
an old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. East Delta Commerce Center? This must be the name of the doomed commercial area. An off-key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then a woman picks up the receiver. She thinks you're the gremlin child. What would he say to this? Oh, I'm sorry, officer. I thought you were... But the doorbell is broken, and the bookstore shouldn't even be on the list anymore. So I can't help you. Please don't call here again. Thanks. A single beep indicates that the line has gone dead. You ring the doorbell, but no one answers. What an ominous name for a hair salon. Doesn't bode well for anyone's hair. Just seeing the words, Andro Orlando, gets your hackles up. Its very existence is a threat to your masculinity, to say nothing of your hair. All you hear is static, but no one answers the call. Ace is low. For the rest of the world, the Aces Low is just some cool Revachol thing, politically neutral. In Revachol, it still holds revolutionary connotations. Also, have you looked at Lieutenant Kitsuragi's clothes? He wears a bomber jacket, just like the ones worn by aerostatic brigades. And those cargo pants look like they could fit tools for hot fixing your burning aerostatic. You should ask him about this. Yes? What about me? What? This? It's just seasonal clothing. Where is this going? Interesting. I think it's called brain. It's no mere brain. Okay, art cup. I do not harbor a sentiment for revolutionary air brigades in particular. Okay, I wanted to become an aerostatic pilot. Then I turned 10 and realized we no longer have an air force. Absolutely nothing. The revolutionary must have added a little luster to it for a 10 year old Kitsuragi. He will never admit it, though. I've noticed. And, okay, the revolution employed a more forward-looking H-Roto design. Their blades were foldable, and their pilots were better trained and motivated. I see this from a purely tactical standpoint, of course. It is not from a purely tactical standpoint. We are not ruling out that the lieutenant had a little rebel phase in that past of his. Good. Good. Let's change the subject. Why does art inspire you so much? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, Art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have the exact features of a savage art critic, with that beard and those clothes, disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture too. Of course not. It's autism, box drawing. Masturbation with a ruler and a sextant, or whatever they use. You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic. Half cop. Quit being so indecisive. What are you going for here? Some kind of indecisive and camp aesthetic now? 
Strike a bold shape here. Go art or go home. Exactly. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals of the street. You must also apprehend criminals of the printing press and the gallery. The trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. An old co East Delta Commerce Center. You ring the doorbell, but try again. You didn't press it hard enough. Thank you for calling the 24-hour window company. This is an automated message. Are you experiencing a window-related emergency? During non-business hours, please call 00725-477-651. The streets are mean, but we're always there for you. That's only half true. The streets are mean, but they're not there for you. No, not a window-related one. Twelve name cards on the call box read. You wait for a minute or two, but all you get from the call box is silence. No, looks like someone has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. The doorbell doesn't work anymore. You hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver but isn't saying anything. You can almost hear them breathe. Yes, hello. This is Tricentennial Electric. Have you come to place an order? She sounds almost antique, as if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. A receiver must not be working properly. Wait, but what happened to Slipstream SCA? There's no Tricentennial Electrics on the list. Oh my God. The lieutenant exchanges a look with you. It's you. My God. I didn't think I would hear your voice here. It's a woman. And she knows you. Your heart beats faster. She must be mistaking you for someone else. Who cares that you don't remember her? Just go along with it. No. Something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Michelle, just please. Sounds like a ghost. Wind blows through your clothes and you feel detached from your surroundings. Inside the building, a cold memory hangs. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. Ever since I came to work here, it's been different, as if my mind's been wiped clean. A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally forget. She sounds like she's about to cry. The cold is deep under your skin, as if you were talking to someone who's a hundred years away. Somewhere inside the building, water is flooding the cellar floor. She doesn't answer. Silence. The only thing you can hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. Another seagull passes by. It's getting cold standing here, staring at the silent call box. I don't know what happened either. We should probably stop playing with this thing. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Whatever she says, it can't hurt you. You're a different person now. Stronger, healthier, and all right. Maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drunk so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. Oblivion's the ace in your corner. There's a light buzz as you press the doorbell, waiting for her to answer the call. It's cold outside, and you can hear the wind blowing into the speaker. 
A strange metallic taste fills your mouth as you stare at the intercom. There's the static again, whispering like a seashell pressed against the air. Yes, hello, this is Triton Peniel Electric. Have you come to place an order? Oh my God. Here come the bad vibes again. Relax, distance yourself from it. Wait, is she? Michelle, just... Why did you leave me call? Is this some kind of joke? The voice from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into your microphone again, crackling and echoing in the box. Your hands are getting cold and your breathing becomes visible, forming small silvery puffs in the air. Ever since I came to work here, it's been as if my mind has been wiped clean. And then it hits you. She tries again not to cry and still doesn't succeed completely. Her quiet sobs sound old and distant as if her voice is being played off a wax cylinder. Real or not, your mirror neurons react. It feels painful to be listening to this. Anger boils up in your chest. Her sound melts into the static from a long distance phone call. From time to time, you can hear people talking in the distance, but can't make out any words. This is where you hung up the call the last time, but the recording is still going. A phone rings in the office with an old-fashioned chime, and someone walks by in a pair of heels. The static is like a warm blanket wrapped around the sounds. No one replies, but the static grows stronger like rainfall. Then a female voice speaks out, completely different from the one before. Glorious and total somehow, crawling inside your head. For 300 years I have been here, volatile and luminous, made of sadium and rain. If you want me, you can find me on the beach. Donna Zernebal. So, it was a recording trapped in the circuitry from some ancient tenant. This sometimes happens. Shall we conclude here? We have other mysteries to solve. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to explain it to you right now. Maybe sometime later. Don't take this the wrong way, but during our short stint working together, something weird is almost always happening to you. That is true. Silence. Silence. No one. Nothing happens after you ring the door. You're going to just stand there and take it from a doorbell? Like a cat's whiskers, your moustache feels it first, followed by your lips. The corroded metal of the intercom, cold, unattainable. Now you're kissing the doorbell. The doorbell remains silent. When was the last time you kissed? Um, <clears throat> that's insanitary. Silence. No one answered. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Hmm, this button looks new. I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't been connected yet. Is it the dice makers? Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. Hello, compatriot.
The look is very intense, as if trying to burrow into your very soul. A faint, irregular breathing sound resonates through the gap, almost inaudible, but still there. The eyes blink rapidly. They seem to be focused on following your every move. I heard you. Holy shit. A disembodied voice. Have cursed, void phantasms come to haunt us for misdeeds done in the past? Don't be ridiculous. It's just a regular person. Probably a worker from the harbor. From your perspective, have a mysterious pair of eyes. Boo. Good use of sarcasm there, man. None of your business. Ooh, so. Oh, oh, you know who's got things to hide. Don't be an idiot and say it. In this day and age, of all times, it won't end well. No. And even if I were, I'm not engaged in anything factually illegal. No crime here. Who do you think you are? Being disdainful and judgmental about a person's private idiosyncratic, voyeuristic, erotic preferences anyway. Fuck shit. Goddamn pigs. By curious. Or plain curious. Figures. What else is new? Certainly not a surprise when it comes to you, nitwit. Welcome 
to fucking Martinez, Piggy. We've got our eye on you. The eyes, the eyes. There are eyes everywhere, copper. Beware. There are so many eyes all over the place. You can't even fathom it. Every hole, every gap, every nook. Someone will be peeking. How can they fit into all the holes and gaps? Are they very tiny people? Or are they eyes separated from the body? Um, what? That's not literal. There are not people actually stuffed into various tiny holes. You get that, right? A boring? You are always being watched and judged. Nothing you do escapes our grasp. We are ever vigilant. We've had our eye on you for quite some time. We saw you stumble out of the hostel, all messed up and stinking of boo. And we saw you cut the body down. Oh, such a Wonderful progress. Hold the applause, ladies and gents. It's a beginning, Copper. Do you consider yourself a clean-cut, upstanding citizen? Don't worry. We'll get you yet. No keeping your nose out of the gutter. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. We can pick up where we left off tomorrow morning. Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! What's it to you? Big mask. Every once in a while. It's like you can see we all work. a monstrous shadow high above the fire traps of the domain. The 881 motorway running over this district of Jamro. Concrete pillars rise up from the midst of the dilapidated wooden houses on the horizon, barely visible, the hazy machinery of the harbor. Life in the domain is even worse off than in Martinez. The cold air is stiff from the fumes of the motor carriages and lorries roaring overhead. Below, broken down, battered people mill on the dusty streets with no purpose. Yet amongst them, there is no sight of this man. Nowhere. Yeah? <laughs> what makes you say that? They know me. That's bullshit. What's it to you, big man? Every once in a while, it's like you can see glit. We all work. A monstrous shadow, high up. So anyway, cop. That's... Yeah? <laughs> what? Your gut's got too much alcohol. What's it to you, big man? Every once... We all work. A monstrous shadow, life in below. Broken down, battered people. Yeah? <laughs> what make... <laughs> What's it to you? Big man. Every once in a well work a monstrous life below. Broken down. Worked at pretty okay as far as lies go. Uh-huh. It's a long time. The ear bull. Oh. You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. Right, you talk to the boss eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to...
Hello again, officer. I'm a night hawk. What can I say? She's still here because you're still here. You don't have to stare because of us. I like the city at night, don't you? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. The frequency tabler lights up, and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something, the soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. Of course. What is her number, officer? Change of plans. Her number. Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Just wait. Relax. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? All right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. There is no resentment in her tone. She wants you to ask her out. No question about it. You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? I, uh, let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. You know whom. You think you hear a sliver of accusation in her words. I really don't want to talk about this. Let's just forget about this, okay? What? No, why would you even think that? Please, don't bring Gar into this. It's none of your business. God, why can't you just mind your own business? She mutters. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. No, not me. What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the court. No one calls the police. The Union would get angry. You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Garbage. I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. No, don't push her. It sounds as if she's about to cry. The other people who live around here. Local people, I... I didn't want trouble. Her voice is resigned and weak. You don't live here. You don't understand. Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with, well, by the Union, internally. Please, I just didn't want any trouble. You do? Oh. What else can I do for you? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the Union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. Got it. 
It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Yeah, go on. Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating, and... Sounds like it's going to be bad. Do you really want to know? Great. Anything else? Well... You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir. Clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Yes. You have obviously done something to upset her at the Whirling in Rags, when she was still working there. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skewer thing happened. It just made me want to quit. The stuffed bird, the great skewer. You threw it against the wall while screaming, fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. Didn't seem like you had fun doing it, though. Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you, well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more, I, I hate it now. We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. To hell with that song. Then there was your room, your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant, and I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about how you're actually a real cool guy, and no one understands it. One of the coolest guys there is. The coolest guy in Jamrock. Something about disco, too. And then I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again. Let's pretend it never happened. Wait, really? No, this is absolutely not true. I like Guard. I really do. No, I was actually flattered. I've always liked him. It was just bad timing. With the corpse and all that. There's a pause. You can almost see her on the other side. The telephone cord coiled around her index. I didn't know what to say to him later. Then you came and destroyed the place. So I left without explaining. <sighs> I should have told him, maybe. Okay, but... Please don't mess it up. Please don't take out your gun or something. All, all sorts of things. From disco, rock too. Yes, that's the one you like to sing along to the most. The later it got, the more that one came on. Interesting. You still have to find the copy, though, before you can blast it. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Sir, sure, officer. What's the number? And the make of the armor, if you know it. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. The International Collaboration Police, ICP, 
is an inter isolari law enforcement service, the crown jewel in the moral intern diadem, alongside EPIS and the coalition government. It will take just a moment, officer. Her voice is faded. <laughs> Gottlieb, what do you want? He's carelessly chewing on a piece of hard candy. Oh, it's you. Was that a snarl or a suppressed groan? No love for you here. And you survived it. Congratulations. Are you mobile? Sort of. But by God does it burn in your chest. Even better. Anything else? I wouldn't worry about that. Officers your age have currently trouble all the time. Also, death is a natural part of life. Accept it. The body is an object, and objects break down. Do what good you can with yours, before the rest goes too. Yes, there's no end to the misfortunes fate has seen fit to rain upon me. Basking in your glory, yeah? Practically drowning in it. Please, tell me what your complaint is before I am completely submerged. With all the damage you've been dealing yourself with drugs and alcohol, I'm not surprised. There is no surprise in his voice. Only careless superiority. What else? I'm not a brain doctor. Look on the bright side, you've got a whole new life now. Use it wisely. It's hard to say if he doesn't believe you, or doesn't care. And then, that motherfucker got left, reeking of snaps, ordered me into his butcher's room. Officer Fisher is in a storytelling mood. He continues, and I ask him, You sure, Doc? And he's cool as can be. Yeah, if you're in pain, we've got to get that baby out. And so he removed my appendix, on the spot, while the party was still on in the other room. And I was delirious with pain, and all the snaps I'd had. But I remember thinking, man, that Gottlieb can stitch. Only a month later, when I got a chance to properly thank him, did I find out that he had no recollection of the event. That's Gottlieb for you. In league with some devil, he is. I'm sure of it. Cheers. The clinking of beer glasses is drowned in group conversation. What? You want me to do blood work for you again? Tell you just how bad things really are across the board? You want another rundown of everything collapsing inside your body? You want the real, honest-to-God truth? Stop drinking, eat magnesium and vitamin D. Our station is not our retirement home. We don't have the funds to deal with rock stars past their prime. The money is probably going to some old, oily... And no, I don't want to hear a political commentary on the topic. In fact, I got work to do. Some idiot has glued his eyelids shut with cyanoacrylate. It looks like mectorsin. It's not fucking cryoactylate. It's super glue, Doc. Cyanoacrylate is super glue. Mm -hmm. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Just a second, officer. 10 to 10 five. This is 41st. Uh, come in. Over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. 10 message received, 10 relay message. What's your status, over? 10 state your message, sir. Ten four. Your badge should have most of your personal details. Look over that. Over. Ten four. Anything else for you, sir? Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Yes, 
Guess what's yours? No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copo type from sorry to anything. No, you don't. Come on. You'll be back to saying sorry in two minutes. Stop wasting time and begin the repentance. Wow. Okay. Fuck off. Maybe we were wrong about you then. Check out the big balls on Firecom. Actual art degree. Trite. Contrived. Mediocre. Milk toast. Amateurish. Infantile. Cliché and gonorrhea ridden peon to conformism. I fucked me. Affront to humanity. War crime. Should literally be tried for war crimes. Resolutely shit. Lacking in imagination. Uninformed reimagining of. Lip wristed. Premature. Ill informed attempt at. Talentless fuckfest. Recidivistic shit peddler. Pedantic. Listless. Savagely boring. Just one repulsive laugh after another. Can I help you? Wait, what? But what about the bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing in the morning she left. You broke the skewer! I assure you it was him. It's as if he can't decide whether to be angry or relieved that it was you. Again. Why on earth did you have to break the skewer? I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. Symbol of hope and all. A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. That bird ain't no symbol of hope. It's a menace and a traitor. All right. Did she say anything else? About me, you know? D did she say anything about me? Really? I, I should... I should give her a call then. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted? Or can you give him a moment? Somehow you realize this is not going to net you any professional discounts. Already he's reverting back to defensive. We were sort of hoping there would be a gun, an expensive jewel, or at least a sword in it for you if you deliver the message. Oh well. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on. Somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door is closed. See a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. 40, 50 years since this was painted maybe. It leads to a side building adjacent to this one. The old building next to this, half ruined. Whatever is behind it must be older. The door does not budge. You do? 
It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? The winch. Outside. In the backyard. Remember? No. Your fingers do. Hmm. Well, if there was a winch, I suppose we could look into it. As a side investigation. It's hardly a side investigation. You already have a name for it. It's hardly worth a title. Anyway, Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Can I help you? Another thing. Great. I l Oh yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just a frit warehouse, probably. Wondering about it is, of course, exactly what he's been doing for ten years. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes? You see a heavy... The worker isn't... Perhaps he's on his way to where you just came from. Into the primordial darkness. A colorful piece of plastic is dangling from his carabineer. Hmm. Makes your fingers itch. It's a dock worker's ID doubling as a shift card and a job permit. A young, able-bodied man stares back at you from the photo. Santiago S. John. Yes? What do you want to know? What's there to say? It's just stupidity. The cop kind. Our precincts can't decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine, as if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite a brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. What I am is least interested in a pissing competition. So, he volunteered to represent the 57th, but not out of competitiveness. On the contrary, somewhere in your mind hangs a dark green blackboard. There are two columns. One says, cases solved. The other, confirmed kills. The rows are endless. Jean Vicmer, Judith Minot, a special consultant. What was his name? Then the rows degrade into green nothingness. Your brothers have left you. Well, technically. The official record keeper has been known to double count murder suicide. A common accounting gimmick used to inflate precinct stats. I'm good enough for this case. I'm not here to compete. I came because I had to. My fellow officers, the sergeants in particular, would have made this scene into a circus. Yes, 
I'm an unrepentant spoil sport. Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. A tremble comes over you. Another after effect of ethanol poisoning, perhaps. Feels like leaves do when they rustle in the breeze, somewhere far away, below the turbine. The 41st and the 57th. The lieutenant was right. It's not about who gets what's north. It's about who doesn't. Hmm. Clearly, he has already formed his own theory. Tell him. Tell him why it's you. It's all part of the master plan, you see. Really? It can't be that. Wouldn't that be something? And who could say it's not true? If you really don't remember anything, how would you know? We should move. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. He's actually glad it's addressed now. Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight Precinct 57. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing piss-stained disco garb. You weren't sent here to win. I've considered it. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional, but I also think it's somewhat unlikely. I check the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. I am the finest of nothing. Safe? No. But you are old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. He's right. There are no airtight theories. Just paranoia. You've given it some thought. Now let it go. What do you want to know? You mean like a brief? There's no reason to wing anything. Three days ago, during that time, the victim... Okay, then. Was there good? Necromancer pig? That shit was dark. Going in there like that. Oh, brutal shit. Tell me, Kuno dies. You're gonna pick one out of his brain like that too? Kuno's gonna go out in a hail of bullets. Gonna look like a fucking porcupine. Quarter Rosa, a side alley of the Boogie Street Spearhead. A young man in his early twenties, approaches patrol officer Emile Mullins and asks for a cigarette. As officer Mullins reaches in his coat pocket for the pack of Astra he just purchased this morning, the man shoots him point blank in his chest. Breathless, the patrol officer collapses in the gutter. His right hand is grabbing the armor on his chest. The bullet didn't pierce it, but he can't breathe. On the pavement, the patter of the perpetrator's feet growing distant. Bleed, pig. Someone opens a window and says, but Emil cannot see who. His sight grows dim with pain. Pigs? Pig! 
Do you have any idea how fucking stupid that sounds? Kuno's cruising his bitch on the town, and the bitch comes back griefing to the Kuno. What is up with that? Get the fuck out of here, fat ass. Those pants are too small for you. The pants are totally okay. Don't listen to her. She's trying to give you body image problems. It's totally okay for a man your age to wear pants like that. And you're not fat. Yeah, did you fuck in there? It's a vitamin pig. Don't you know anything? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's going to use it against you, Kuno. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. Oh, that? Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Yeah, Kuno plays on Snuff Radio. Fucks pigs, live. Fucks their heads off. Kuno's a cop killer. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. The fuck about it? Kuno doesn't give a shit about the armor. That fucking had one thing majorly wrong with him. He's a fucking mutant. Do you remember how he looked? Fucking growth hormone shit. He's a giant. The armor's too big for any man. Kuno doesn't give a shit about that freak armor. Kuno threw that shit away. Oh, come on. He's just pretending that he doesn't care because he's too small for the armor. Get the fuck out of here trying to fuck on me with that midget shit. Kuno's 12. He's huge. What are you? Fucking 80. When Kuno's 80, Kuno can fit four of you in Kuno. Fuck out of here. Trying to fuck on Kuno. Fuck out of here. Kuno tried to get the helmet on. It was too big. Kuno kicked that shit in the sea, rugby style. That shit means nothing to Kuno. Yeah, that shit means nothing to Kuno. Kuno doesn't give a shit about material shit. Kuno's a fucking monk. You want to fuck on someone about that armor? Go fuck the mustached union fuck. The jolly troubadour shit at the gate. Yeah, cock in boot. You know that jolly union cow fucker? Came around talking about cows or some shit? Came around pretending like he cares about cows? Yes, you met him at the gates. The one with the boots and the jolly smile. Yeah, he's the one you want to talk to. He's fucking crazy about that armor shit. Coming here pretending like he likes cows. Trying to catch a peep at Kuno's armor. Curious, my liege. Why did Kuno feed you this information? Yeah, Kuno's doing charity today. Kuno day. Kuno feels sorry for you two loser pigs. Kuno's doing pity now. Still, seems suspicious. He may have it in for that guy. Or you may be paranoid. That is also a possibility, sire. Fuck are you talking about? What is this contusion shit? He says you're stupid, Kuno. They want to make you stupid again. Oh, did Kuno make your shit sniffing harder? Obstruction of shit sniffing? This is Kuno's kingdom. Kuno fucking rules here. Hmm. You hear the lieutenant hum. He's thinking the kid has amassed quite the vocabulary of law enforcement terms. But he's not going to stick his nose into this. Me and my partner are wondering, do you guys puff Peter? Kuno erupts into laughter, pointing his finger at you, then Kim, then back at you. An unfortunate choice of words, the lieutenant from Precinct 57 thinks. He looks at the harbour walls looming overhead. He could use a cigarette right about now. Your test and Kuno... Get lost, f Kuno gets it from his dad. 
Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks too. Don't expect to talk this one down. There are some situations your mouth can't get you out of. You won't sweet talk your way around this man. Good thing this psycho drug boss is strictly optional. Like half? A baggy, but like in this vial? That's half a gram, sir. Yeah, half a G. Want it or not? Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. Okay, Kuno's listening. Alright, pig. You can plug him, but you can't stop him. It'll only buy you time. Just get in the apartment building. Kuno knows you already fucked your way in. Kuno knows everything. Go to room 12, first floor, and kick down the door. Police violence style. Kuno style. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckheads. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. What the hell are you signing us up for here? Okay, then. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. The magnesium levels in your blood are dangerously low. It's about the low magnesium levels and not the high alcohol levels. Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. One stroke? Don't be so modest. He's having one right now. Yes, if you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to transcend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. Just remember, it's not the alcohol. Buy more of that too. Alcohol is not the problem. And it's certainly not the dextroamphetamine, nor smoking for 40 years. It's the lack of magnesium and excess of coffee. You should stop drinking coffee. It wreaks havoc on your gastrointestinal system.